In this episode, we are joined by Ms. Denise Chung, the CEO and founder of Tide Consulting, based here in Saigon, Vietnam. This episode is really helpful for anyone who is interested in meditation retreats, especially if you feel you are ready for those long 10-day retreats where you can meditate for 11 hours a day. Enjoy. All right, what's up, everyone? Hello. Welcome to another episode of the Look Saigon podcast. And today we are joined by Ms. Denise Chung. She is the founder and CEO of Tide Consulting, a consulting firm that specializes in leadership development, HR, and change management in Vietnam. So thank you so much for joining us, Ms. Denise. Thank you very much, Nick, for your invitation. I'm, I'm very happy to be here on the Lac Saigon podcast. I'm really excited to learn about this. I've heard about this this retreat for a while, but I never had a chance to attend. So just so our, our, our listeners know right now, this conversation is about your experience in Vipassana meditation retreats. So I guess to, to start off, what is what exactly is a Vipassana retreat? Um, before um, before getting into the juice of this interview, I would like to just share a disclaimer first. Mm. I'm not a Vipassana uh, teacher. Um, I this is just I am sharing just a return on my personal experience, um, and I uh, and there are different approaches to Vipassana. Mm. Uh, the approach that I attended is um, not the same as others, so um, mm. please be mindful on that. Sure. Um, and uh, at the essence of it, Vipassana meditation means seeing as it is seeing as it is mm. and so this um, it's all about um, putting off uh, turning off our monkey monkey mind and uh, turn off all the judgment and all the opinions that are coming up and uh, in a more reactive and impulsive way whenever we are interacting with our environment and so basically it's really uh, putting off everything all the, the, the judgment and opinion to see things as they are. Mm. And so uh, the Vipassana retreat is really not about um, any religion. It's actually, it welcomes all religion uh, being uh, from Islam to Christian, Christians to uh, Catholic to Buddhist. Any religion is accepted into Vipassana retreat. Um, it's more like a, a spiritual retreat rather than a religious retreat. There mm-hmm. is no sign of religion, or even though it happens in the generally, it happens in temples. Uh, in general, the the temples will hide all signs of religion to mm-hmm. not um, to not intervene and to not um, uh, show that it's it's not related to any religion. Yes, mm-hmm. so. Every religion is welcomed under the condition that people are putting aside their religion for the 10 days of the Vipassana retreat. Mm -hmm. So if there is any uh, prayers that is involved, then they will have to pause this praying, uh, this daily praying. um, They will have to leave that and really follow the whole process. Mm-hmm. So as I mentioned, there's, there are different approaches that uh, exist on Vipassana. And the one that I uh, in, attended uh, two times is from the Guru S.N. Goenka. Um, so uh, he spread Vipassana since in the 70s. And then it grew a huge popularity. And now um, it's across the world. The Vipassana from Goenka is the same style, it's the same system of 10 days of 11 hours of meditation per day, two meals. You start at 4 a.m. and you finish at 9 p.m. every day. Mm. Um, Every meal is vegetarian um, and you have, of course, some breaks in between meditation uh, sessions um, and you make the vow of silence. So basically, you... uh, you can't talk, so no words, uh, no writing, no reading, uh, no drawing, 
um, in my first retreat, there was not even a mirror to look myself mm. into. So it's, it's a very intense, especially now, it, it, it might sound a little bit weird and, and totally hippie to turn off all your phone um, and, and no books, nothing, and you just face yourself um, in this super safe environment that everyone is a volunteer and everyone is giving 10 days of their time to help you all the volunteers are here to help you to make sure that you 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 can follow you you don't think of anything else than your practice of uh, meditation mm. and so that means that all your meals are done by volunteers uh, all the food is 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 uh, yeah is prepared and uh, yeah everything is set for for you to have a great retreat mm -hmm. um and uh, wow. yes, that's basically what is Vipassana retreat um, in a nutshell. Which day? Because it's you said it's ten days, right? Mm -hmm. Which day was the most challenging for you? Oh, in so your experience? I, in my experience, uh, the last the last days are challenging. The last days is it because of just holding yourself in that physical position of meditation or is it like the mental aspect of it? Um, and, and it's, it's the whole thing. The whole experience is, is very challenging because mm. as I said, we are today, we are hyper-connected. Um, mm. When we wake up, we look at our phones because that's where our, we are woken up by, by our phones, right? Mm -hmm. um, we have notific thousands of notifications. Um, we have emails. We have phone calls. We need to attend social events. There is no time in our today world to focus, to fully focus on ourselves. Mm -hmm. And Vipassana Retreat is a great space for you to do so. But the thing is that facing your, your thoughts, facing your emotions, your fears, your experience, you think about everything because there is no distraction, right? So your brain needs to get entertained and entertain that, uh, itself, right? So, so um, they will find any way <laughs> to entertain you. Um, and so they, you can see some, the fact that it's, 10 full days of only observing your thoughts and emotions ah. and in your past experiences, you, at some point you kind of start of seeing that you're going in round and round and round and you're repeating the thought patterns and you're like, mm. oh, oh, wow. I wouldn't think that. Like, like taking the time to really understand those uh, vicious circle in your thinking can really be eye-opening mm -hmm. it's a true eye-opening but but it's scary because you're not used to that it's this it's totally a discomfort zone for us um and so i believe that uh that there is a not everyone who is ready to do that and i and i believe that everyone has a the right moment to to do a vipassana retreat I feel like the more I learn about this kind of this specific retreat, the more I think I'm going to be doing this soon. <laughs> Have that feeling. Mm -hmm. I think it's just time uh, to try it. Yeah. If you feel like it's the right time uh, and that you're ready, I feel ready. Like I'm, I was into meditation in, in general. I was in, into temple retreat. I had a, a good interest in that. And at some point, I just, it was one of my friends did a Vipassana retreat. Uh, I think it was March 2018. No, March 2019. Uh, and then when she came back, I could definitely see the glow on her face. Like she was happy. There was some soft, some in a, in a very delicate energy. Mm. And I love that. I love the energy that she was uh, projecting. And I was like, and the next day I just said, like, let's sign up and let's do this. Uh, I want the same glow 
and so yeah I, I managed to to get it <laughs> but the thing is that the glow the glow is is uh, fading uh, the more when you come back to the the normal life normal life um the glow is is fading away but uh but at that time i felt totally ready um and yeah it was like my it's it's literally i felt like my body went there first and then i understood emotionally and and cognitively how important it was for me to go there mm. like what uh yeah in your experience what was the biggest effect it had on you after your first time after my first time uh, in general it's it's uh it boosted my emotional intelligence like mm. all pillars in emotional intelligence you have four pillars self-awareness self-management social awareness and social management all four was totally boosted in 2018 i was a people pleaser and i would literally pour my heart my whole heart into helping others um, which made me highly vulnerable whenever there was a, pr a problem or a criticism i would take it mm. super personally retrive uh, cry cry a, a, a good a few minutes and then regroup and and continue again in this pat like repetitive pattern um mm. where i would really be nurtured by helping people and pleasing them mm. and there was this kind of addiction to that addict i was addicted literally addicted to help people today i help people but i'm self-balanced I know how to voice my boundaries. I know how to voice my mind. I, I trust my intuition more. Mm. So it's two different things, right? And because what, from my childhood background is I was born in France in a Chinese uh, family. And so I had to be a good daughter. I had to uh, respect mm. my parents. I had to um help, help with the family business and shut up and that's it right but there's mm. there is a growing that uh, across for my first 28 years of my life there was a growing uh, like black energy that just like then got stuck here and uh, because I, I couldn't say anything i just had to smile mm. while i was dying inside and the thing is that in 2018, I had a panic attack and that triggered a whole psychotherapy uh, process where my psychotherapist was asking questions that I never heard before. And that helped me to, to link things together, like my, my present behavior and my past behavior mm -hmm. and my past experiences. And that whole trig the whole, triggered the whole personal development where, um, and that's, that. so I was, in a position that I was very curious on how to improve myself. I was very curious on discovering new practices that are not rational. Mm. But because like and up until that point, I was like, okay, I only believe what I can see. Mm -hmm. And and during that period I realized that oh, there are actually things that I cannot control. And the only thing that I control is my that I can control is actually myself. But to do that, I need to really go deep inside me to make to make sure that I understand myself and that I can I can gain control over myself rather than my emotions or my thoughts. Mm. Um, and so Vipassana really came at the right time uh, where it really connected the whole dots together uh, where I was, I, had, I finally had the time to face myself, understand that uh, the cravings that I have, the attachment that I have to on um, helping people um, and, um, um, and how to, to detach myself from me, Denise, Denise Jung, uh, and, and, and my identity and, and um, the influence of my education and everything, and my behavior. 
because most of the time when you do something, you you kind of you say, okay, whatever I'm doing, this is me, mm. right? And it's the same for my company. Like, like there's a lot of entrepreneurs who think that their company is the extension of them themselves, mm-hmm. but actually it's not. It, the company is the company. You are you. And if the company fell, it's okay. It's just a playground. If the the company succeeds, then it's okay. But there is no like attachment. Like there is an attachment there, but there is no like uncontrollable attachment to it. Mm. Detach yourself from your actions and your thoughts and emotions. That's a huge, huge work. Mm. Huge work. Yes. You mentioned intuition a little bit earlier, and th- in this podcast, this question comes up in various conversations. Which is, I'll try. Yeah, I'll ask the the guest. How would you define intuition? Um. So, so I think it's important also to dis- to make the difference uh, to differentiate intuition and instinct, right? Okay. It, it's very. Sure two words that are very close together mm. instinct for me is what ma- it's our uh, animal part that mm. talks it's like impulse it's like okay in- instinct is okay survival instinct i need to uh to 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 hang out in a, in, and have sex with my boyfriend and and this is in- instinct right mm. intuition is more like for me, intuition is letting go of all the the thoughts that I have and the mental the thinking models that I have, and just like make space for everything else, because we are not only our thoughts; we mm. are also emotions and behaviors. This is the cognitive uh, model. And 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 w- the balance is in between uh, our thinking, our feeling, and our doing. And I believe that intuition is there. Mm. It's like understanding that okay, there's it's not only a hundred percent of my thoughts that m- that pushes me to do something. It's also I factor in also my emotions and what my senses are um, getting from the environment and from the situation that is happening. Mm. So intuition is, is for me, uh, letting go. <laughs> it's letting go our, of our thought pattern and, and, and making space for other things. Mm. Do you think it's like, uh, like not trying to use our rational mind to figure everything out? Maybe going with a gut it's, feeling it's... or something? Um, for me, it's it's uh, composing with what is happening in your mind, what is happening in your heart, and mm-hmm. what is happening in, basically in your body. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, would you say that the Vipassana retreats have helped you with that skill of, of letting go and, I guess, going with the yes. flow? Yes. That's that's what I I, I was uh, talking about attachment. Mm. It's uh, as a uh, Essen Goenka is saying, the Pasana retreat is like making a uh, surgical surgical uh, a surgery in your brain that goes deep inside you, in order to uh, take out all the the sankaras, all the attachments that you have within mm. yourself um, and take them out of your system. It's like mm. kind of a purification. But it's painful. It's it's super painful. And and you need to be ready. Um, as a I believe that um, you need to be ready to to, to sit for eleven hours uh, mm. with your your um, your legs crossed, cross with waist cross legs. Mm-hmm. Um, you need to accept that you you eat only two meals per day that will be vegetarian. Um, that might be not good, 
you never <laughs> know it depends on the center and where you are mm. um you need to be ready to face yourself and to um and to trust the process most mm. of the time we need we want to control everything we need to we control deadlines our time we control how we speak we control how we behave and everything here it's it's literally a super a, a, a space that is full of care and at the same time pain mm. because you one of the the principle the, the is the there is four noble truths the first one is life is suffering uh, craving um craving creates suffering there mm. is an end to suffering and there is a path to suffering and so understanding the those four noble truths and trusting this process is one of the biggest challenge as a beginner and and as a first timer um and for the second time i would say that the challenges was to let go of what what happened on the first experience and say mm. okay i am open i keep myself open for the second one because there's going to be other stuff and so letting go of those attachments um, because like even the attachment of uh, when you get bitten by a mosquito what do you do you like, sort of scratch, the, scratch yeah. you scratch your skin mm. even that is an attachment because the thing is that the the skin will will heal at some point, right? Because mm. our body will will heal from the for the mosquito bite. Mm -hmm. But in the vipassana meditation, we need to stand still. Mm. Like whatever happens, if there is a mosquito, then there's a mosquito. If it's too hot, then it's too hot, and you will sweat your 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 whole body your whole the whole water everything in your body um if it's uh noisy outside you need to fully focus on the body scanning that the that the guru will will tell you and teach you because mm. this this is the only truth that uh that exists is the sensation that you have within your body mm -hmm. i think now this is Going into the question, okay, so like in this retreat, we are observing, right? Like it's just hours of observing our mental noise and all of this stuff. Um, like at, at some point, do we ask like who or what is observing? At some point, do we ask if we, if who is observing? What do you mean? Because like, if I'm if I'm observing all the my mental chatter, it, it's kind of like it's like I use my eyes to see things. I use my hands to feel, right? Like all my senses. What is the sense that I'm using to be aware of my thoughts? There is no senses. You literally, with the, in meditation, you're asked to uh, sit cross legs, close your eyes, uh, put your hands on your lap, and that's it. Mm -hmm. So there is no, the senses, it's actually like focusing on all the senses that you have across your body, because we learn how to scan our bodies and how to observe our breath going mm -hmm. in and out and in and out. And this is very boring. <laughs> it's a very boring process in meditation, but but there is a um, uh, you don't you the, the thing is you don't sense your thoughts. You mm. focus on your senses, on your sensations, in order not to focus too much on your thoughts. Mm. So kind of just let them keep talking until they fade out yeah hmm. it, it must feel so nice when like your mind is quiet it is it's as if you were high hmm. yeah it's the same effect where you 
it's the same effect as being a how can I say I don't have any analogy for that but it's it's uh, it's like you're on a cloud and you're just like cruising the sky and and it, and it's a very it's it's a very in interesting experience i i really uh, i really recommend it and actually this again this is from my personal experience um other people may have experienced differently have different sensations um and and uh yes but but literally um the meditation that meditating for 11 hours and at some point you meditate still can create a release of dopamine mm. which is the 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 molecule of happiness and the neurotransmitter of happiness and so that releases and so it's the same effect as uh, taking um, the pills like uh, ecstasy the ecstasy pills mm. Mm. Yeah, I think I'm gonna have to try this pretty soon. Um, yeah, see, like for people, but like, don't 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 expect it. Don't expect the ecstasy effect. Okay, don't uh, expect sure, sure. it. Do not get attached to it. This is the problem with that: is that if I share my experience, I mm. will influence others, and I I don't want to give too much of that. Um, yes. Yeah, actually, when I when I first got into spirituality, I was expecting like a a, a DMT trip to happen or something. <laughs> then maybe that's it. That's the one. You don't know. Right mm. now, I would I would want to try vipassana. Yeah, like the the retreat. Yeah, for the purpose of yeah, like helping me to deal with my own noisy mind. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think it would be beneficial. From my life to do this yeah um for that i i uh, so the vipassana retreats are everywhere around the world uh in the, in the us across europe across asia um i would recommend to uh, you to go on dhamma d-h-a-m-m-a dot org to see all the courses that are available Generally, courses are opening for signing up uh, one month before. Um, for me, I and this is only for the teaching from Goenka, mm -hmm. which which is uh, the one that I followed twice, and um, and generally it's the same system mm -hmm. and the same flow. Mm -hmm. Let's say for for those uh, those of us that we can't book ten days off of work for now, like. For example, like for me, I I can't do that until the summer, but um, mm -hmm. in the meantime, what could I do? Just I guess just meditate at home for yeah. many hours. I try, try five minutes and then go from there. <laughs> mm. Actually, like before going to Vipassana retreat, my first time, I I never maybe yeah I never uh crossed the the five minutes line. I think. Wow. So it it was a uh, it was uh, yeah very hard for me to 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 focus. That's a big. Job. It was good enough. Five minutes is a good. It's it's a good. Uh, it's a good thing. I mean, it it can save your day to just meditate for five minutes, right? Mm. Um, but yeah, it was it was a big jump from five minutes to a full day of meditation. But again, I trusted the process. Mm. And that's that's I think the the secret of it is that any courses that are from Dhamma that org, you can trust because it's it's the whole thing is super well thought. Uh, Goenka, so he was a guru from the seventies until up until uh, the beginning of the two thousand tens, and he managed to systemize and optimize the whole thing and the whole experience. Well, being uh, very, very open and full of love, and 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 I think it's it's uh, it's an incredible man. 
he he literally built a solution to help you being like loving yourself but also loving others without uh, return mm. and I, I i think that this is the beauty of humanity is that we are born as a, as compassionate people mm. we're not born as aggressive or angry or or blamers we are born as a good person it's just after our environment influences us mm. Yeah. So I believe that anyone, everyone should go. Definitely. Yeah. Just, yeah. And, and, and I know 10 days is a big commitment, especially for, for um, busy people like you. But it's the best investment that I have of 10 days that I've ever done in my whole mm. life. 10 days in a whole life is nothing. And it True. can change the whole perspective that you have on life. It's so transformative without putting too much hope on your expectations and on, on how you, you will be after. Mm. But, but it's, uh, it's an incredible, incredible 10 days. Yeah. In some research I've done about this kind of retreat, they mentioned it's good for like addiction recovery as well. Yes. But you need to have recovered from it. Mm. Uh, also, be aware that there are some conditions. They are, they are, they are available on the dhamma.org uh, website. Uh, and it's important for you to acknowledge. And they will make you uh, sign the waiver uh, and really um, give you all the conditions for your attendance. So uh, you have to have recovered from your addiction um uh and we have addiction to very simple addictions the first one comes to mind is phone we yeah. are addicted to our phone and our mm. screens and this is this is not um helping at all um and also like you you should not be a patient of mental mental illness mm. you shouldn't you shouldn't have any mental illness conditions um, and there's other conditions that you have to, you can see and, and, and have to accept. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, yeah. I can, I, I can kind of <laughs> feel like in my, like in my inner chatter, like part of me is excited to try this. And then another part of me is like, Hey, let's not do that. <laughs> It's um, it's uh, sometimes our ego is sabotaging us mm. um, because it's scared. Mm. But sometimes you just have to let go of it and and follow your heart and your intuition. Mm. And if you think that is the right time, you will see that your body is is literally walking without understanding why, but it's. That your body will know that it's the right thing to do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I feel it. Like that most of me is saying we should do this. And then you know what to do. <laughs> yeah. I guess in the meantime, I'll, I'm going to, yeah, like, I would do sporadic meditation and, yeah, and not for too long, just maybe like 10 or 15 minutes. But I think to prepare for this one, I should, I should increase that. There is no obligation at all um, in terms of conditions of admission. Uh, they, if you haven't meditated at all, they won't uh, tell you no. You can't. You, you can be admitted to that to that pre-passana retreat. There is no. Um, yeah, it's not compulsory to have meditated before before mm. entering a, a Vipassana retreat. Um, so uh, if you feel like it, yeah. If you feel better, if, if you want to meditate before and prepare for it, it go for it. But uh, it's not compulsory. Mm. OK? That's so right. don't put so much pressure on yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. So we have about three minutes Till uh, yeah, till our chat ends. Do you have any yeah any final words to uh, 
uh, to say to our listeners about Vipassana retreats? Go for it. Just do it. That's it. Just do it. And experience, like, give it a try. It's even for people who are very rational, um, who think that everything is sorted out in their life and that they don't need it. I believe that there are so many answers that are in a Vipassana retreat because it's literally looking at yourself mm. in the mirror without any distractions. It's like, oh, 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 like out of office <laughs> uh, email and, and auto reply where you're, okay, I don't care about what is happening in the outside world. Well, I will care about myself right now. Mm. And it's so transformative and so insightful. And if you don't go through the 10 days, it's all right. You've tried. And it doesn't mean that you cannot come back to it. Because mm. some people are um, abandoned along the way. They abandon around day four, day three, because it's very painful to sit on the ground on a, on a very flat cush, um, pillow mm. with your cross legs. So, yeah, just follow your heart and do it. Mm -hmm. It sounds like this retreat would help us to get out of our own way afterwards. Mm -hmm. Yes. Because I feel like the, the way that I've been going at it is like I keep getting in my way and I keep mm -hmm. and I am learning from those mistakes, but I would prefer to just not make so many mistakes and just increase my awareness another way. Yeah, but sometimes you're making mistakes for a reason and, and maybe mistake making those mistakes are part of the of the whole process and mm. making do and maybe those mistakes are not as big as before you don't i don't know um that's yeah. true that's true all right well, thanks so much denise we'll see you again next time thank you so much nick for your, uh, inviting me and um have a great evening thank you thank you so much take care <laughs> Bye bye, bye, -bye.